So United have finally brought a midfielder in and it's safe to say it was definitely needed. There's been a lot of different opinions on United's new man, Manuel Legate. Some would have who believe that he could barely kick a ball. Some would have who believe that he was hand dropped from above to help United's midfield troubles. The truth is, Ugarte's level is probably somewhere in between that. And stylistically, whether you like Ten Hag's style or not, he does fit it like an absolute glove. So in terms of Ineos back in Ten Hag, they've done it so far in the transfer window, and with this latest one, they are backing him to the hilt now. We all know that PSG didn't really want him, and that £42 million fee that United have paid for him is a little bit steep. But just because he didn't really fit in at PSG, he didn't suit the system that they were using, that doesn't mean he's a bad player. Listening. In this video, I'm going to look at exactly what he can bring to 10 Hags United now. As always, guys, drop a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new around here, and let's get into it. Right, okay, let's go. Now, I, like many of us, remember that sport in Lisbon game up against Arsenal in the Europa League, and that did kind of put Ugarte on the map, really, and... You could see from that game why everyone was raving about him at the time and a big move was obviously due for him. It just happened to be that he didn't go to the right club. He's still only 23 years of age, he fits the age profile the United have been looking for all summer long and he's already had a few years of European top flight experience now. He's got that under his belt, so what are his strengths now? First off, looking at what he can bring to United without the ball and it's an area where Ugarte can really help United. United's system still leaves far too much space in midfield, and Casemiro struggles to keep up even from the first opening 20 minutes of a game, never mind the last 20. And even Mino now has been feeling the pace towards the end of games in United's frantic style. You can see that in the first two games of the season. United have needed reinforcements in there, but Ten Hag likes to play McTominay higher up. McTominay's gone anyway. He doesn't seem to trust Eriksen anymore, and Collier being a very young player. So United don't have the options in the deeper lying positions in midfield. So Ugarte will help that. Ugarte does bring that energy in absolute abundance. He can press effectively for 90 minutes, and he's got very good speed as well. And He's got decent agility to effectively challenge the opposition. He will help United's counter-pressing style, and he'll certainly bring that fight to United much like Martinez and Casemiro did in their first seasons. Ugarte is known for that aggressive style of play in midfield, and he certainly doesn't shy away from a tackle, and he absolutely loves to get stuck in. His speed enables him to close down players very quickly, and when you add on then that very strong tackling ability, you can see why his dual percentage is absolutely through the roof at times. His ability to defend transitions is definitely something that United will rely heavily upon in our current style of play. He has a very good defensive awareness and he's got a good nose for danger. But he does have a tendency to be a little bit over aggressive in certain situations. This can lead him to losing duels in the middle of the pitch, leaving his team vulnerable in certain situations. Some tackles, obviously, when you win the ball in those situations, it looks great. But when you don't, then you can be left with a little bit of egg on your face and we have saw that somewhat regularly with Casemiro, definitely in terms of last season. In possession, certainly don't expect anything flashy from this guy. Ball retention is absolutely going to be the name of the game. Ugarte regularly plays those bounce passes in between centre-backs to circulate possession, and he eventually will find the rest of his other midfielders then as well. He's very calm when receiving the ball in and around his own box. He does have a very nice switch of play in his locker, if he is given a, a bit more time on the ball, but he's very much a safer option than Casemiro. He's definitely less direct in possession. But that's definitely not a bad thing, and United don't ask for a lot of central progression from their midfielders anyways. That's normally the job of the defenders in Ten Hag system. And sometimes, uh, to be honest, we just skip that phase altogether anyway. So it seems now that Ten Hag really does view Agate as the perfect midfielder for him. When dribbling, he's not a Frankie de Jong level of press resistant. Sorry to mention that guy. You were the chosen one! But Agate does have very nice close control. He does have some body, a little bit more in possession, I think, because he offers more carrying than the likes of Casemiro. The biggest weakness that I'm really worried about when you bring an Agate into this squad, and 
potentially into this starting Levin straight away as well, is going to be that aerial ability. United already struggle at set pieces. We struggle in general. And it's one of the areas where Casemiro does really play a huge role. Ogata at just around sort of six foot. I do expect him to get a little bit bullied uh, up against teams like the likes of Brentford, teams like that in the Premier League. You look at even Arsenal now. They've got a team full of um, six foot two people now. So you can see aerial ability is um, becoming more and more prominent in the Premier League. And I do feel United have fallen a little bit behind in this regard now. When you've got Martinez as your centre-back, when you've got Ogarte as your number six, it's definitely going to be an area where other teams are going to look to target do. Adding him into an already aerially weak team is going to be a major worry for me. Overall, you can easily see why United and definitely Ten Hag have been chasing Ugarte all summer. We've known now that, yes, United have been looking at potentially other midfielders and we might bring some others in. Obviously, we know now that McTominay's gone. Eriksen might be going through the door as well. So United may be looking to get in someone else in. But Ugarte was always the prime number one target and we finally got our man. For Ten Hag's system, he can press all day and he can defend on the front foot. With the ball, he's got good retention and United don't ask for much of that central progression from the midfielders. So he seems like the perfect fit for Ten Hag's midfield now. Time will tell how effective he can truly be for United and whether United have finally solved that gaping hole in the midfield. I'm not 100% sure because I do still feel that potentially in even a season's time that United will need to go out and buy another number six. But there's no doubt that Ugarte right now can help United massively this season. When you look at our current midfield options, adding Ugarte to it, for the price is a decent enough fee. It's definitely a good bit of business from United, but for me, the issues come from the long-term feasibility of whether Ugarte can play in this squad and be in the starting eleven long term. That's my issues with it. There's definitely some very good points about it, but there's definitely a, a bit to work on. He's definitely not the complete all-round article, but you can see from the number six op options throughout the um, world this season, there's just not many other options out there. The likes of Onana, those people have already moved on. So United have been, uh, fallen behind a little bit, but it seemed like Ogarte was their man. They got him. As, as I said, there's definitely some good points about it. Let me know what you guys think about the transfer down in the comments down below. As always, guys, for everything United, I'll catch you in the next one.